So we're at the uh, trail again. It is Sunday, can't see my watch, the uh, 21st of February, and we're back on the trail. So I had to wait a week, I think it was last Saturday I got off the trail, so over a week. Um, feet were killing me, and I just had enough with the shoes that I was using, and I could tell it wasn't going to get any better, so... So I went ahead and did what I should have done before I ever started this hike. It's a good lesson for anybody watching this. I'm going to have a whole breakdown on what I've learned with this hike. But shoes, you got to have the right shoes. And um, I suppose each through hike, terrain and stuff depends on what you're hiking, what shoes you wear. But I'm pretty sure they're almost always going to be the same thing, which is these trail runners right here. Um, for me, anyway. Everybody has the Ultra... Lone Peaks, which uh, are great shoes, I'm told. And I was told to get those to begin with. I didn't do it, and I get this, because I wanted to save some money. I already had purchased two brand new pairs of running shoes. Um, I always used ASIC running shoes, the Cayano ASICs. Really nice running shoe, lightweight. Get it wet, dries instantly. It's got like a memory foam insole, and it's always done fine for me running and day hiking. And even overnight, two, three nights in a row, I never really thought there was a problem. Of course, I haven't compared it to anything, but that's all I've ever used. Tried to save that extra 200 bucks or whatever it is. With shipping and everything, it was about 200 bucks for these shoes. $170 plus I overnighted it. It only took a week because we had such severe storms this last week. It just happened to be that I had FedEx overnight and they, they couldn't do it, so... It took them seven, eight days to get it to me. And that took seven or eight days of staying at a friend's house and not being able to hike. So I'm behind. So trying to save that money, I did the first 350, 350 miles. And as if you've been watching this, I had a lot of blisters in the beginning. They kind of went down. My feet look crazy with these crazy blister shaped calluses. But they finally kind of went away. I thought, all right, well, we're settled in now. Everything's fine. Uh, first 300 miles is done. My body's adjusted. Feet are adjusted. No more blisters. Here we go. And it got back out on the trail after Coco, which I stayed in the hotel for a day and uh, or two. Immediately got my feet wet and immediately had problems. Within two or three days, I was I was unable to even limp. I was just done. So I had to call in for a ride to get home. And I just decided I'm either going to order these shoes and give that a try. If that doesn't work, I'm done with this this stuff. Because uh, I've been in agony, really, you know, since January 10th, with very few days without it. So, also, my pack is just too heavy, and I can't figure out what I got to do. And so, I took the week, literally took the food I thought I needed and cut it in half and realized, eh, I'm fine. I've got two to three days worth of food here still. So, that was a big issue, is just trusting the resupplies that are coming up and making sure... You know, you don't overpack food, which is always my problem. Um, also eliminated some more things I didn't need. Just stripped it really down and you start doing just what everybody tells you to do. And everybody tells you that you will do. So I got my pack down to around 17 pounds for a base weight. That's everything without food and water. Now I can't go any lower than that without buying more gear. And the more gear would be a new sleeping bag. I like to buy a 20 degree quilt. Instead of carrying this giant zero degree down sleeping bag, which is too much, but it's what I have. I spent a lot of money on it last year. I have another one that's too warm, so I don't have that right quilt. I'm going to have to carry this heavier one. I'm just not going to spend another 500 bucks on another sleeping bag. Uh, I'm going to camp here tonight, but it looks like we might have people camping. Which is the problem with being on a campsite near a road. Here we go. Been, uh, just doing this. I got a little piece of branch in there, but this way I don't have to carry a stove. It's been working pretty good. I don't get hot coffee every day, but when I get a chance to build a little fire, I do. As long as I can, I'm right next to a stream here, so I can always put water on this. It's just a couple of branches, really. It's not going to be a super hot fire. I'm trying to get it just to be enough to, to get this hot. So, usually it's pretty good. 
back on the trail. This is, uh, uh, what's this called? I'll have to think of the name of the camp, but uh, did not sleep at all. I gotta get back used to adjusted sleeping after a week, only a week of sleeping on a mattress. It's, uh, it's a pain. But anyway, we've got 13 miles to go, and then we end this section of Gut Hook with the Florida Trail. I'll be at the campground headed into Headed into Ocala National Forest tomorrow, so that'll be cool. I'm gonna get a uh, tent site tonight. Uh, it's about 13 miles from here, and it should be good. Hey, good morning. So, I thought before I leave camp, I'd just do a quick video on what has changed. I just got back on the trail on December, excuse me, what month are we? February 22nd. So, I was off for about seven days, which is crazy long, but. I was hurt a little bit and then I was waiting on shoes. So the first thing, I did a gear video when I first started and I knew things would change, they keep changing. I think I'm in a place now where I'm gonna be good to keep going. And um, first thing I wanna say is when they tell you that you need to be light, it's true. Don't think that uh, an extra pound or even eight ounces or whatever, ah, it's not that big a deal. It's a big deal when you start walking a ways. It's not that you can't get it done, it's just that you don't want to. And over time it builds up pain and injury and blisters and uh, it really caused me to get off the trail. I've lost a lot of days in a hotel. So just to give an example, I started with my running shoes, my Asics running shoes. I think I showed those in the gear video, but they're good running shoes. Kayano, Asics, Kayano. They're not meant for this. They're not meant for the wide box you need for your toe. They don't have enough cushion. They have about like that compared to that. And um, those two things together, when you're pounding the, the ground eight hours a day or more, especially on road walks, which we have a, a lot of road walking in Florida on the Florida Trail, destroys your feet. So the first thing I got, I'm gonna click over to this next video. I'll talk about the gear here. Uh, I got new shoes and that's a big, 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 big deal. So let's go into what we got now and what changed. First thing that changed with these shoes, uh, I just got these two days ago. These are Ultra uh, Olympus. Uh, a lot of people use the Lone Peaks, those are good too. These are a little bit more cushiony, a little bit more rugged. Uh, these are a, quite a, it's like, I can't tell you the difference. It's like riding in a, uh, a Ferrari compared to a donkey. I mean, it's like no comparison on my feet. Just walking around camp, I'm just like, oh, I'm in heaven. So if they continue to be like this, which I know they will because people have recommended these for, the, for that reason, these are giving me a ton of cushion. And this toe box, I've just got so much room in here. There's my toe and there's my toe. And there's just enough room to, it's like very open. And all of this space here is open. Okay. That's, uh, there's my big toe. So I got, I got about that much space. And just a piece of advice, uh, and you're going to hear me repeating things everybody says that I'm finding out are true. I'm stubborn. I like to do it my own way, but don't do that. Do what's recommended because it, it really, there's a reason for it. Uh, and the recommendation is get a size bigger than your foot. My foot is 13. This is a 14 uh, Olympus. And I think I could have gone to a 15 even. They, they still feel like they're on there good. And then they're wide open, almost like a soft slipper. And I'd even take more room in the front, so I might get 15s if they have them. That's the first thing that's major. The next thing I did was cut a lot of stuff, and you're going to notice I kind of laid it all out here. Biggest issue I've had is food. This bag was full most of the time. And this is a, that's enough food for two, possibly three days. But just fear of not having food, even though it's not rational, and I, I never, ever got down through that bag. I just kept resupplying and just thinking, well, I better resupply, you know. That extra two, four, five pounds is really what killed me, I think. So cutting my food down to really saying, all right, I'm just going to eat this, this, and this, and then I have a store coming up in a day. It's very important to map out your trip. So get up, in, you know, at, at the night before or at your resupply that you're doing and say, okay, well, how far do we have to go? Well, if you only got two days literally to go and there's going to be a gas station, don't pack four days of food because it's going to, it's going to hurt you. Uh, I changed out, I should have took a picture, but I changed out my tent to a big Agnes. I lost the stuff sack in the wind, so I got it in this stupid thing, but big Agnes, tiger wall, two person ultralight tent. 
my other little tent that i had in the videos was five pounds this thing is two pounds twice as big much better construction better ventilation two doors i mean it's just it's a million times better same thing with the shoes this is a huge upgrade it cost me 400 bucks but i couldn't do it with that other little tent it was impossible uh clothing bag i've cut my clothing down almost to minimum and i think i could probably cut one more piece um the fear is you know do i have enough for cold weather then we got hot weather i've kind of realized what i need for cold weather i cut out as much as i could probably about a pound pound and a half of clothing uh last week so so you know three pounds three pounds four pounds another pound pound and a half and you start to see that you're talking you know five six pounds of stuff that i started with that i thought i needed and i didn't uh, same air mattress. This is stakes for the tent. And I cut down my accessory bag. This used to be full too. So I got rid of some of the medical stuff, even though I had all my little emergency medical patch, uh, pouch. It was stripped down, but it wasn't stripped down enough. I haven't used any of it. I barely use ibuprofen. So instead of carrying half a bottle of ibuprofen, I carry five, maybe six. And if I need more, I'm going to walk past a gas station in the next week. So I'll get more. Um, I cut this um, cable wire down to um, paracord down to almost just what I think is going to be necessary to hang a bear bag. If I hang a bear bag, I might be getting a bear canister instead. But I cut that and that was like a half a pound. I threw out soaps and a couple things I didn't need. Um, the one extra I'm carrying I'm probably going to throw out is this deodorant, which I really like having. <laughs> After a week out here, you, you smell so bad you can't stand yourself. And that actually, I think, has cost me money because I'll run into a hotel out of just desperation. Like, I got to get, I just stink so bad. I think if you had deodorant and you had a chance to wash up at a creek or whatever it be, you could stay out here longer without spending the money. Um, frog tog. I got my little frog tog jacket. I had this, uh, but I'd already purchased the heavier duty one. It was much more weight. Not much more, but I mean more. And it ripped really easily so I, I went ahead and went and got my back up the little tiny ones was very light and i took the, the pack with it just to protect it because it's very fragile but it's enough to keep you pretty much out of the rain um everything else in here is the same same sleeping bag just cut a lot of stuff guys so now my pack is literally with food and water down to about 26 pounds and that is still not ultra light but compare that to i'm sure it was 35 probably eight nine pounds heavier then you throw in some water. Maybe I was carrying three liters of water. Now I'm carrying one, maybe two, because I'm realizing there's plenty of water. And um, sections that don't have water, you might have to carry a little bit. But just getting that dialed in, so important. So now my pack is a reasonable weight. I got rid of my stove. I kept the tin, or I kept the, um, uh, I kept the titanium pot. I use it to make breakfast in the morning, and then I also am just cold soaking. So just set up my lunch for today we're cold soaking this couscous that's all i'm doing so i'm learning to eat less i'm learning i don't need much uh what i do need i can get fairly easily instead of packing way too much stuff huge lessons even though i read this and saw this on all the videos super important so a couple of those are the lessons for you uh weight super important you must have the right shoes the right shoes, I think, are Ultras or something equivalent, but Ultra, the company Ultra. Uh, I like the Olympus. That's kind of their top of the line cushion thing. And my feet hurt a lot, especially when you carry. That's the other thing. Every pound you carry extra is more weight on your feet, and it does make injuries happen. Um, blisters, terrible pain. It makes the day horrible. So I'm feeling so much more energetic just having the proper um, shoes. I also changed out these shorts, believe it or not. Went ahead and got some actual decent shorts. A little bit expensive. Got them from Bill Jackson's. Nice shorts. Those, you know, they're that bamboo ultra quick dry. Because the shorts I had were good shorts, but they had a belt. And the belt was constantly in the way, and the, the pack wouldn't ride right. It would pinch me all day long. It just made everything terrible. So I, I was trying to avoid, here's a lesson, trying to avoid spending more money. And that's what I'm trying to help you. If you're starting out to buy this stuff or do a through hike or a section hike, you see these videos all the time, and my experience is they're straight up true. Get the right shoes, get the right clothes. You know, merino wool is going to breathe and keep you warm, but dry quickly. Um, don't wear cotton because it's heavier, it gets wet, and it's just useless and 
cold and you know get uh, the one thing I would do different is I wouldn't be using this giant sleeping bag which is a zero degree can't see it but zero degree down which I bought last year thinking that's what I needed now I can use that out west on a winter trail but out here in Florida it's not it's overkill I need a 20 degree quilt I have a 35 and a zero <laughs> 35 wasn't enough when the cold weather when these cold nights come in it's it's not enough uh so what would i do i would i would still would upgrade and get a 20 degree quilt for these kind of this kind of hike uh but then i'm talking four or five hundred dollars more so each time you do these little lessons and replacements you're going to be spending money don't try uh, this is my advice i did it i didn't listen to this advice don't try to save money by let's say not buying new shoes i had already had running shoes that were brand new i had a backup pair i figured i'll make that work i use those hiking they're fine it's not the same when you're doing a through hike and you're hiking eight nine hours a day every day five seven days a week or more um so trying to save that extra 200 bucks with shipping on these shoes i probably spent five nights in a hotel recovering from blisters so you know what is that 700 800 bucks just to try to, just because I could not, I couldn't make it work. And then I ended up buying the shoes anyway. So same with, same with uh, all this stuff. If you can get, uh, get ahead of it before you start and you're planning this, buy the right gear. Don't buy a massive water filter, buy a Sawyer Squeeze. That's another uh, thing I changed out way back at the Big Cypress. I got rid of my giant Catadine ceramic thing and used this. Don't use the Sawyer Mini. Don't use the Sawyer anything else, in my opinion. This is the only one that works well. I bought the micro and threw it out. So you learn these things. But now my pack's down, I think about 18 pounds without food and water. So that's a, that's pretty good. It's it's not ultra light. This is not an ultra light pack. It's one thing I'm gonna change out as a pack. And uh, you know, I would change up my sleeping bag. I would uh, change out a couple more things, but, but I'm getting down there. It's very doable, it's comfortable, and I can do the hikes. 20, to 8, 20 miles a day without feeling like I'm just can't get through another day. All right, that's the lesson. Save money by doing your homework. Listen to people that do this. I mean, there's different opinions. It's of personal choices, but there's a reason why people buy a 20 degree ultra light quilt. There's a reason why they use ultra, ultra Lone Peaks or Olympus. There's a reason why they don't wear giant cotton stuff and jeans and <laughs> You have to do, you know, there's a reason why. And the reason is weight and suffering. And eventually what happens is you'll get ta you'll take get taken out. Even if you have willpower of super strength, you're gonna be taken out by injury, blisters, just getting sick of carrying too much weight. That's my lesson for the day. Leaving Sulphur Camp. I got one more day's hike today. I'll be getting to the end of this section. It's going to be uh, staying at the uh, at a campground up here. It's kind of a cool little spot here. There's a creek that comes out of this hill down below. Really perfectly fresh water. It's a nice little camp. And once I get to this tonight, tomorrow we're basically heading into the Ocala National Forest section. So I'm going to pick up a bear can at the campground, I'll be putting my food in that. And, uh, cause you either have to hang your food or have a bear canister. I figure it's just easier to have a bear canister. This one, ah, right into the spider. <laughs> it's on my glasses. Hang on, where'd he go? Um, yeah. Don't wanna have any trouble with bears. I have not seen any bears. Now that I said that, I probably will. But... This is nice. This is like old forest here. I like this. We're in the Seminole State Forest right here. Walking through. This will be my last section. You know, kind of a short hike through here, just a day or two. Nice though.
is nice out here. He's got a good flow. Getting into a swamp here. The gold cypress. So if you don't know, when you see these trees that look like they have uh, the base is like, almost looks like it's doing what it is doing, sucking water out. That trunk that spreads out like that right there. Those are cypress trees. And you'll see those anywhere there's good water like this. Nice. Thank you, Boy Scouts, for building this. The Boy Scouts usually are the ones that do these. Sometimes the Florida Trail Association does them as well. Otherwise, it'd be a mess. Get through here. Still lots of areas that are a mess, but that doesn't hurt. Going in. Oh, I give you a little shoot to walk down here, I guess. I could have walked on the road. But we'll see where this goes. Hmm. Well, I see he got a gate fence there. This is cool. It's private property they negotiated to allow trail to pass through. A lot of this stuff is that way. In Florida especially. I'm really liking this Seminole State Forest area. It's got a nice, uh, nice clean forest feel to it. A little bit of swamp, but mostly just beautiful trees. Old oak trees, pine trees.
walked into this looking for a place to sit down and look at this somebody's house right here supporting the trail take a look at this little thing they built for us it's like Florida trail oh well, that's pretty cool all right and you walk in here <laughs> you got a shaded rest stop throw your trash away sit down for a bit get out of the sun fantastic look at this thing Perfect, exactly where I needed to rest too. Just enough, just enough walking. I need to stop right here, perfect. Thank you, whoever did this. If you know who did it, put it in the comments. Really liking this Seminole State Forest stretch. picture right there isn't it I'm gonna take a picture of that hiking in this Seminole State Forest all day, all morning I should say. It's 11.20, I started about eight. Um, it's all great, man. The trail is just pretty much like this. I mean, this is a fantastic walk. It's not often you get a nice stretch like this. Um, this feels like walking on clouds. Very easy, not too much sections with water, there's like one or two, but uh, this is fantastic in here. It's kind of nice because this butts right up when I get done here to the Ocala National Forest, so get a good stretch of forest. And This is what I've been told, and this is what I've discovered, the lower section, first 300 miles, 350 miles of the Florida Trail has some moments, but pretty garbage. Pretty much garbage if you ask me. Now I'm not trying to take away from all the people that work on the trails. The volunteers are awesome. The trail angels are awesome. The water caches are awesome. It's just the freaking what's Florida down south is pretty pretty trashy. It's just uh, roads and canals through uh, undrinkable canals <laughs> through sugar fields and uh, muddy horrible cattle stretches, cattle fields and. There's some nice spots, but uh, this is a lot better. So, when you do the through hike of the whole National Trail, Scenic Trail, you kind of want to do the whole thing, which is what we're doing. But if I were to come back and say, hey, what sections do you recommend to hike? I wouldn't do anything below Lake Okeechobee. Maybe Big Cypress, if you're into that. That's a, that's something that's a, <laughs> You either love it or you hate it, I think. Very interesting, I'm glad I did it. I can say I have the memories of doing it, especially doing it with Adam there, that was, that was a great hike, but I wouldn't do it again. A lot of hard work and a lot of, um, it's not just hard work, it's just, psychologically, it's just not fun. Um, pretty brutal. I wouldn't do the canals, I wouldn't do Lake Okeechobee, and even north of Lake Okeechobee is pretty crappy. Um, you got to kind of get north into central Florida from like Tampa as far as north and south in the state, right about the middle. That, that's where we're, we're north of all that now, north of Orlando. And this looks a lot like, it looks a lot like where I live in Brooksville, which is north of Tampa. So we're kind of in the same general east and west corridor and, uh, 
this is a lot better guys i'm just saying <laughs> so it's improving my rating of the trail this is more like what i'm used to hiking over there uh i know it's going to get even prettier and uh i guess that's my assessment so far uh, too much road too much canal too much nasty mud although i'm sure more of that's coming it is nice to actually be on a trail for a day or two and really see some scenery there's some beautiful sections on the way uh, three lakes was nice um certain sections but anyway this is what we got up here if you don't want to do the whole entire trail i suggest you start about three lakes wildlife management area around coco or possibly up in this area and head north that's what we're doing all right we're getting to the ocala forest ocala national forest clearwater lake recreation site that's where we're headed i just came out of paisley Florida, a little town around the corner. Had some of the best stromboli pizza I have ever had. Little family place called uh, Palermo's. And I am definitely gonna try to see if uh, Sandra Friend and whoever does the app, Gut Hook uh, Recommendations gets them on there because somebody commented on there from a couple years ago and I stopped by and I gotta say, man, I haven't put my comment on yet, but great food it's a fan, little family restaurant too i'm not sure if they're greek or italian i assume italian but it sounds like they're talking speaking greek but we'll see i think italian <laughs> hopefully they're not watching this and mad at me for calling them greek instead of italian but uh whatever they are they are fantastic cooks fantastic uh strong boy. so i i ordered a huge one it was like 16 bucks a little bit pricey it's uh i mean literally we're in the middle of nothing in Florida here so to have a high quality pizzeria there I think the guy Mike also was from uh, his family I think their family but from New York so we had like a New York you know Palermo connection going on it was great food in this little spot in the middle of nowhere so hey there's a deer I wonder if you guys can see him You're looking right at me hello ladies yes move on there's a tail there they are right there. You see them? I'm zoomed in as far as I can go and I think they moved already. God, they're fast. They're gone. There they are. I was looking right at them. <laughs> they're just so camouflaged, they're gonna go across the road. Do it! Do it. Very good. You're in the shot. So we had a great time at Palermo. So anyway, I'm gonna try to get them put on the map. So now we're at the uh, um, Clearwater Recreation Area for Ocala Forest. Rained a little bit, so I had to put on my little frog dogs. I'm sweating to death. These things work pretty good, um, but it stopped now. So we're very close to camp, I believe. I'm hoping it's right here. Called the head, tried to reserve, can't reserve. Just a walk up kind of thing. And uh, the ranger said to come on in. And they got plenty of sights. So we'll see what's going on. Looks like, I'm assuming we go this way. Maybe not, we'll see. Just FYI, if you're coming in from uh, the trail, Florida trail heading north, and you're planning on staying here you gotta you leave the trail i think the trail's back there it turns and then you go left right there but we want to keep going so we're gonna keep going into the fee area up the paved road and we should hit the campground so the campground is about 20 to 25 bucks a night i think total with the fees maybe 27 and that's the deal because we got uh let's compare that to a hotel 100 bucks, 125 bucks for a decent hotel. You might get one crappy one for 80, 75. And you gotta deal with bed bugs and garbage. But let's say a decent hotel, 100 bucks, has got a good deal on it. This is 30, you know? What's the difference? Well, you're gonna sleep in your own tent, but you still got laundry, you still got uh, showers, bathrooms that flush, 
potable water, fire ring, you know, you're still good. So we're gonna head up here and spend the $30 to uh, stay here. Tomorrow I'm planning on leaving here and heading to Alexandra Springs. So it's only a 10 mile hike, plus the, you leave the Florida Trail for a few miles or a mile or so to get to the springs. But I'm gonna really take the time to do that because everybody tells me to and I think that's the whole point. So they also have canoes to rent. We'll see how much they are. If they're not absurd, I might rent a canoe and go out for a couple hours since it'll be an early day. Maybe not, we'll see. Ah, oh, it's good. So I'm getting to the point where I'm back on trail. These shoes are fantastic. Feet are still hurting. Taking a week off, uh, FYI, even taking just a week off is uh, your body has to reset again. My muscles are tired and I'm hitting 15 miles and starting to get sore and all that like I used to. Right before I got off trail, I was doing 20 miles a day without any, any of that, except for the blisters from the shoes. So. So you gotta rebuild, take me a few days. But uh, I did 16 or 17 today, that's not bad. And though my feet are sore, they're not, I mean, I'm still going pretty good. They're not destroyed. It doesn't hurt with every step and I have no blisters. So that's the difference of trading these shoes out. But um, I'm feeling like I'm, I'm behind schedule. I've got, uh, I've got to complete this by April 1st to April 15th is probably more likely. That was my original window of 90 days at the outside. I was hoping to get it done by mid-March, but that ain't happening because we're already into February 22nd. I got 700 miles to go. So I'm way behind in that go as that goes, but who cares, right? If I have to come back, I'll come back. I need to be available for work come April. So got to reset that piggy bank. Fill it up with some cash so we can do this again somewhere else. That's how we live. So I'm at my camp. $27 for this campsite. And I, come, and I even bought some wood for that. So it was about 20 bucks plus the wood. Just want to have a little wood for who knows. May want may not even use it, but maybe tomorrow. Tonight for a little cup of coffee. This is my home tonight. I love these little campgrounds like this. 20 bucks, tax included, $21. Shower, hot water, restrooms, potable water, fireplace, but they got a bear box right there. Put your food in, no, no worries. Tomorrow's gonna be similar up at uh, Alexander Springs, I think. Alexandria, Alexander, whatever it is. Excited, feeling good. Tired, but good. Time to, time to set up. 12.30 in the morning. It's pouring rain outside. <sighs> My sleeping bag has a tear in it, I guess. So I woke up to all this down feathers all over the place. I had to seal it up with some Luco tape, which is like medical stuff for your blisters. And then in moving around in here, I sat on or moved or lay down or whatever on my glasses and broke them. All this rain came out of nowhere in five minutes when I was literally going to use the restroom. I come back and it's, I come outside and it's pouring. So, just what we need, more water for the trail tomorrow. Please. 